Hello and welcome to another podcast brought to you by Hivemind112. Today's turn in tactics will be on the Spore Mine. Okay, so before we begin about the tactics on how uh, Spore Mines are relatively actually pretty good, um, I'm going to tell you, you're not crazy for uh, curiously clicking on this video thinking, Spore mines? Tactics? What is he on about? Um, there is actually logic to using the spore mine. Um, I'm sure many Tyranid players use biovores, and the single spore mine that just floats around uses the same profile as the spore mine launcher, except it doesn't have a range. Uh, it's a large, large blast, strength 4, 84 hit, so it can actually be very deadly against um, pretty much anything. You know, it, it can hurt marines if you if you get lucky, but against horde armies, foot slogging orcs, uh, guardsmen, even guardsmen and carapace are going to feel the burn if they get hit by a spore mine. So yeah, you're not mad if you're thinking, how can I use spore mines? But um, I mean, I think spore mines are the most underrated Tyranid um, unit entry. They are 10 points each, 10 points a model. Uh, you have to take a minimum of 3, so it costs 30 points, which is what I, I personally would use. Um, I start using them in about an 1850 point game. I will take 3 clusters of 3, so 9 spore mines is 90 points. And um, what you do is uh, you, you take your cluster of spore mines and after table sides have been picked, but before deployment, you deep strike in your three spore mine clusters. Now, what you do is you deep strike them in normally. You put down the first spore mine, scatter it, put the other two around it, then you do that simultaneously for the other groups. Um, now, what they do is when the game starts, uh, the spore mines will individually float around a d6 and a scatter dice, so you follow the arrow. If you roll a hit, you can move the spore mine any direction by the d6 in any direction that you wish. So they can, they can, they're gonna, they're not the fastest movers, but I mean nine of them. They start off in your opponent, opponent's deployment zone, and can have some quite devastating effects. Like I said, against horde arms. Obviously, um, they're not going to be very helpful if they run into the side of a land raider. But hey, it's, it's ten points. It's worth, worth a chance, I'd say. Now, um, the spore mine, like I said, detonate large ordnance blast. Um, not ordnance, sorry, just large blast. Strength 4, 84. And this happens if it ends its movement of the D6 and the scatter die within 2 inches of an enemy, or if it comes into contact with an enemy um, enemy model. So, infantry, tanks, anything really. Um, it's also removed from play if it touches impassable terrain. And if it touches a friendly model, it, it doesn't. Don't worry, it doesn't block your own troops. It just gets removed from play. Um, now, uh, like I, I've just spent the last three minutes explaining what spore mines do. Now to get down to how spore mines can be effective when not being launched from bioboard. And um, if you're not playing against a complete horde army, or or you're playing against a mech army. But they're not going to be too uh, helpful. But because the spore mines come down before your opponent deploys, even if you're deploying second, um, you can use the spore mines in the deployment zone to psychologically affect his deployment. I mean, uh, okay, picture it, you're a tower player, you've got a few unit of fire warriors you've got to put down, and I suddenly spring 9 strength 4 AP4 large blast templates and scatter them around in your deployment and you've now got to pick somewhere for your fire warriors to go where they're not shut out of the game so they still have decent line of sight still have uh, good position to shoot and they're not going to be somewhere completely stupid like the back of the corner of the board or um, another scenario you put down so you uh, pick sides put down objectives and then I put some spore mines on your objective. Now, 
other than the psychological effect of deployment, so you think, oh, geez, I've got some spore mines in my deployment now, I've got to, got to uh, try and get away from them. Uh, you can, uh, if I'm not, if I, uh, if I'm correct, you, you, you'll pick sides, you'll put down any, uh, objective markers, and then you will put down the spore mines. And, I mean, if they, if you're playing bases, uh, you can, you can put the spore mine down on the objective. Now, this will mean your opponent will have to take a unit, whether it's a throwaway unit, uh, a basic infantry unit, or, or a vehicle. They're gonna have to spend a turn shooting the spore mines off that objective if they want to go on and claim it without kind of blowing themselves up. Because you can't really run the risk of waiting for the spore mines to go and scatter off and run away from the objective. And, uh, yeah, so really that's the spore mine. It's just a psychological weapon, if you will. I mean, like I said, uh, when it gets to about 1850, I mean, you could even use them in 1500. Why, why can't you, or, I mean, you don't even have to use, like, three groups of three, you can just use, uh, a couple of groups. I wouldn't recommend taking just the one group of three, because there's not really enough of them on a six by four board, which is what the usual, uh, game will be on. Six by four down our local gaming club. Uh, it's, it's not really effective to have just three on a six by four. But, but for what they do, for what they can do, should I say, and for what the psychological reasons you can have them for, for 10 points each, minimum 30 points because you have to take the three, they, they can be very effective. And I just think they're, they're cheap enough and can have a good enough effect that you should take them just for that chance. I mean, even if they don't really do anything that game, they, they kill a couple of guys or they don't kill anything at all, they still do that psychological deployment zone effect on your opponent which is worth probably the 90 or the or the 60 points you're spending in the first place anyway. So um this is uh so hopefully this has helped you think uh, uh next time you browse through your tyranny codex you won't just breeze past the spore mines. You you're taking into consideration what I thought and think oh yeah this this isn't complete madness and uh, thank you for tuning in and watching and uh I'll see you all later.